yesterday I had opportunity to, to go into a lady's home that we're looking at. And, uh, you know, the last thing out of my mouth was this, you know what, we're going to try to find a way to help you, you know, get out of this jam you're in. And like Jay says, sometimes you can't, the best thing you can do is buy the home from them. But. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Imagine what it will feel like having all the private money you would ever want for your real estate deals and to never miss out on a deal. Well, you're about to hear the story of how a real estate investor who just recently started raising private money raised $1,950,000 in private money in just the past four weeks. My guest on today's Raising Private Money show is Brett Johnson. Brett is from Temple, Texas, and started a construction company back in 1997. He credits his success to being a believer in God and a follower of Jesus Christ. Brett was diagnosed with a brain tumor back on December the 5th, 2021, and now today, Brett is totally cancer-free. Now, if you want to be inspired and learn how you can get your own private money, you are going to love this episode of Raising Private Money. Come join me right now as we visit with Brett Johnson. Oh. Brett, here's what I want to know. I want to know how in the world did you feel when you were able to break through and finally realize that private money is the thing that you were missing in your business. So Jay, the, I felt really great the first time that I got private money. And, you know, I've always used banks all my life and I really didn't know private money. Like a lot of people don't know about that. But uh, yeah, we were, uh, we were able to raise 1,950,000 in uh, just a few weeks. So. That's awesome, Brett. That's fantastic. So, you know, um, you came recently to um, my Private Money Academy conference live event, and uh, you told me that, you know, you just learned so much of the event about how to approach people and talk to people. Of course, when we're talking private money, we're talking about doing business with individuals, human beings, just like you, just like me. So let me just like ask you a like really broad question and you can answer this, you know, uh, you know, answer it any way from any angle that you want to. So, you know, someone hears you raised $1,950,000 in private money in just a matter of four weeks. Um, how would you answer the question, Brett, how do you do that? How in the world do you raise $1,950,000 in funding? And you decided to use private money instead of going and using, you know, your local bank. Uh, how did you do that? And of course, there's like 10 different answers to that question. But, yeah. but uh, how, how did you raise almost $2 million in four weeks? Well, Jay, uh, I want to give credit and praise to God, first of all, because all things are possible with Jesus. And so... Uh, that's been my company motto since 1997. And, you know, uh, God just opens, you just pray it up every day and God opens the doors and you got to step through them. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, uh, just something that you, you know, I, I learned that it's the money first and, at your conference, Jay. And so, uh, you know, I always try to get the deal, then go find the money. But the proper way to do that is to find the money first. So why, why is that? I mean, it sounds like that <clears throat> the money comes first really resonated with you when you first 
um, heard me talking about that. Uh, what does that mean? The money comes first and, and why is that important? Just because when you get a deal, you don't need to go scrambling and begging for money. You need to be opening the doors for people to have an opportunity to invest and to be paid for investing. And so uh, that's kind of uh, kind of my look on it. Right. You know, one uh, one question that I get um, a lot, Brett, uh, particularly from real estate investors that have not raised private money yet, they'll say, well, Jay, how do you approach people? How do you talk to people? How do you introduce this idea of private money? So, Brett, what I want us to do is to really drill down on this story of uh, you raising almost two million dollars. Um, how did you start the conversation? How does how do you approach someone when you're when you are attracting and raising private money? What's that conversation look and sound like? You know, you just you just open it up with, hey, you know, uh, I got a a really good investment opportunity for someone. And, uh, you know, if you're interested, uh, I'll be glad to share it with you. And, and I just, you know, this guy was a good friend of mine and, and, uh, I just began to share, you know, with him and he said, you know what, I, I'm going to do that. I want to do that with you. So, you know, um, just, just have to be honest at all times and, just open your heart and just befriend people and love on people. You know, that's our, our number one goal is to help people in this business. That's uh, <clears throat> um, yesterday I had opportunity to, to go into a lady's home that we're looking at. And uh, you know, the last thing out of my mouth was this, you know what, we're going to try to find a way to help you, you know, get out of this jam you're in and, like Jay says, sometimes you can't, the best thing you can do is buy the home from them. But um, yeah. Well, you know, you said a really, really important word just a moment ago, and that's the word help, H-E-L-P. It's all about helping other people, serving people, putting them first, uh, creating win-win scenarios. And so let me ask you this question, Brett. You know, the way we do private money, of course, we're talking about doing business with individuals. One thing that we offer our private lenders is a mortgage or a deed of trust, depending on the state the property's in. But a mortgage or a deed of trust is that document or that legal instrument that collateralizes the note and protects the private lender. So even though this private lender was and is a good friend of yours, um, how important was the deed of trust or mortgage that you gave to the lender in order to secure their note? Yes, it's, that's very critical. You know, people are not going to put that much money up, even small amounts of money without some kind of guarantee, you know. So that's really good to have um, that aspect of it. Yeah, my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we've got right now 44 private lenders that are investing in our deals. And I ask them all the time. I ask all of them. I say, you know, <clears throat> we've got a relationship together. Um, you know, we know each other. But after they've gotten into the program and, you know, been with us for a while, I'll ask them, uh, what was the top reason or reasons that you decided to do business with us? And of course, one reason is they're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> they're going to make a whole lot more, more money than they could say in the local bank at a local certificate of deposit. Uh, obviously, no matter what kind of documentation and security got, unless they like you and they trust you, they're not going to do business with you. Yeah. But then in addition to that, invariably, all my private lenders tell me, that it is that deed of trust or mortgage that secures the note and backs their loan to us. So, you know, all of the loans that we do with private lenders, it's the real estate that we are purchasing yeah. that is, that is backing, you know, that is backing that note. Um, so that is just, just a phenomenal story 
that you've got there, Brett. And, um, you know, you mentioned God, you mentioned Jesus, you mentioned the kingdom. You know, I've been a public speaker training real estate investors for many, many years now. Uh, Carol Joy, my wife and I, we've been investing in single family houses since 2003, but we started using private money actually in 2009. Uh, we started educating other real estate investors how to do it. And, you know, you go to speaker training school, they say, never talk politics, never talk religion, never talk about your faith. Um, I don't talk politics because even my some of my good friends are on the other side of the aisle. But uh, when it comes to being authentic and being really and truly who you are, <clears throat> you know, I'm not ashamed at all to let people know who I am. And that is that I am a believer in God. Uh, I know that Jesus is the son of God. And you talk about that all the time. What's your, what's your take on letting people know what really your faith is? You know, some people say, if you let you know, let people know what your faith is, you're going to run some people off. What are your thoughts about that? And, you know, you just have to really pray that up every day. You know, that you, God gives you the words. He'll give you the words to speak to people. But I do, I've had a lawsuit, uh, you know, uh, filed on us uh, for religious. Um, uh, we, we, hold, we do Bible studies every week in our companies. And, and uh, you know, and we let them know that if they don't want to be a part of it, they can go stand outside, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you just got to, you got to, you got to be like a fighter jet. I always say, you know, that fighter jet, he swoops in and he drops the bombs and then he's out of there. And I feel like God gave me that, that picture years ago, that that's the way we need to do sometimes, you know, um, when we're ministering, it's, it's what, you know, it's kind of like, if I'm in a if I'm in a chair, I'm standing in a chair and I got four or five people around me, is it easier for them to pull me down or for me to pull them up? And so we have to just we have to set the stage, speak the words, and then let God water those words. Yeah. You know, um, I I tell people the reason that I want to be totally transparent and authentic with who I really am is because truth be told, Brett, I mean, when it comes to attracting private money or doing business with people that want to sell their house or anybody I'm going to do business with or anybody that I want to hang out with and be friends with, I want to pull closer to me the people that are most like me. And quite frankly, if I repel or run off people that are not like me, then that's okay. I want to hang around people and be, you know, be around people, you know, like myself. Now, let me ask you this question, Brett. What was it? Well, first of all, what year did you start investing in real estate? Um, so I've done just very little investing. So I, I got to have a construction company that we started in 1997. And, and, you know, I remember I'd go buy, you know, hundred acres or something there around home and flip it, you know, but uh, really, you know, we didn't start till 2019 when we started our company, uh, Kingdom Developers. I got you. So what was going on? What's been going on in your real estate investing business to where something happened, something triggered in your mind, something came along and you heard about it. What was it that got your attention that you wanted to get involved in using private money for your deals, say, instead of, you know, traditional institutional money? Correct. You know, uh, heck, um, it's, it's just, uh, um, Were you running into any kind of problem or challenge that caused you to seek out private money? Yeah. I mean, you're just always needing money and banks. They take too long. They're, they're slow. They're, um, you know, they, they get paid by the hour. So they're not, not, they're not in a hurry to get you your money. And, uh, and then with all the, you know, the paperwork that you have to 
turn in every month on loans is it and it gets it gets overwhelming when you're dealing with banks yeah well you know the list is long and i know you know it like i do <clears throat> the list is long as to why i absolutely love private money over institutional money or bank money or and i've got some great friends that are hard money lenders uh but of course when you're borrowing any kind of institutional money it's the lender that's making the rules. But you know, in this world, we're making the rules. We're putting our teacher hat on and yeah. we're teaching potential private lenders, people that we've got some kind of relationship with, what private money, you know, is all about. And in fact, Brett, what that reminds me of is I'm just so excited about this recent private money guide that I just finished writing. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. So if you're listening or watching to this podcast and you're going, you know what? I really want to learn more about how this private money thing works. This is absolutely free. You can download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's J <clears throat> J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash money guide. This will get you on the fast track to private money and get you in the position like Brett and myself to where you never miss out on a deal because you did not have the funding. Brett, back to those reasons as to why we like private money overdoing business for the banks. Well, you know, the, the list is long, as I said, as, as you said a moment ago, it's like the banks take forever in order to fund a deal. And, you know, when I was relying on banks up until 2009, um, I actually did not get some of my offers accepted from sellers because it was going to take me 30 and 45 days to close. And in this world of private money, I make all my offers to where I can close within seven days. So I want you to share your part of the story to where you were down to like just a few days before your contract was going to expire to close on this deal. And what was it that happened that private money actually saved your deal and you didn't lose the contract? So the way that I, I, I started using the private money was uh, I had a bank lined up to do the, the loan, which I was needing $1,950,000. And so um, I, I pushed every, the banker from starting the process of the loan until I got back from Jay's conference. And because I knew that I was going to learn something there that was going to help me with that private money. And so I went to Jay's and I come back. I learned all the, you know, how to talk to people, when to talk to people. And, uh, you know, just made it all fit um, uh, for me. And, you know, I love these private uh, lenders because every one of them are your friends. I mean, you love them and they're, they're part of your family. And uh, I said this one time before, Jay, but it's money. It has to be happy on both sides. I love that phrase. In fact, I heard you say it at the live event. Yes, and say, so what does that mean? Money's got to be happy on both sides of the table. So if I'm buying a house, I've got to be happy with the price. The seller has to be happy with it or it's not going to be good. Yeah, that's called win-win. You know, my dad told me years and years ago, he says, Jay, you know, every transaction that I'm involved in, unless everybody is winning and coming out ahead, he said, you know, I don't want to be involved in the transaction. And, you know, Brett, you and I are of the same mindset. We got the same values. We believe the same thing. And that's what you mean, if I understand it correctly, about the money being happy on both sides of the table, right? right. Um, so, so Brett, you know, you've been you've been in this real estate investing 
world uh, for a little while now. If you knew when you started what you now know about real estate investing, what would you do different when you started out? You know, uh, it would have been a lot easier and I'd be a, a lot further along, you know, uh, in my process. Um, just, uh, just, I would be so much further down the road, you know, um, I, I guess you're, I guess you're talking about in relation to having private money. <laughs> yes. In relation to having private money for sure. Yeah. Well, and I tell you, Brett, you know, uh, people ask me that question all the time. The biggest mistake I made starting out is I tried to do this business by myself and on my own. What a mistake that was. I mean, the biggest advice I can give, uh, to people that are starting out um, and of course, I work with all different levels of real estate investors and their experience. In fact, Stu and Harriet out of Elmira, New York, they already had a portfolio of over 100 houses before uh, we started working together. They've already raised, I guess, about two and a half million or so. I know your totality, you told me, in private money that you have up to this point is $2,950,000 in private money. But, you know, private money just really takes the handcuffs off of you and puts you in the driver's seat, puts you in control. One question I get all the time, Brett, is how in the world do you get all that private money, Jay, and you never asked anybody for money? And I haven't. I've never asked anybody uh, for private money. I've never asked anybody uh, to, like, fund a particular deal. And I say, Jay, how do you get all the money without asking for it? And the answer to that is we put our teacher hat on just like you did. You taught the person you know that invested with you at a million nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You taught them your private lending program as to the type of interest rate that they can get, uh, the length of term, et cetera, how they can get their money back in case of, of an emergency, et cetera. And you know, private money can be used for all kinds of real estate deals. Uh, yes, it can be used for single family houses. It can be also used for commercial properties, apartments, and et cetera. But this particular real estate deal that you've uh, got in the works is really different. So what kind of real estate did this private lender actually uh, fund for you? What kind of deal is it? So it's a, it'll be a subdivision. So it's 156 acres. There'll be 218 lots on it. And so we go in and we put the water, the sewer, the streets, the, all of that. Then we have builders that build a bunch of houses and then we'll build a few too. That's awesome, man. You know, uh, my dad, Wallace Connor. Um, later this month, he's going to be 89 years old. Can you believe 89 years old? In fact, at the upcoming mastermind meeting, you'll probably meet him, Brett. But, uh, my dad at 89 years old, he's got one subdivision going right now, uh, 350 houses. That's a little bit over halfway built out. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, he did all the infrastructure and then he's got a great friend. That's a builder that's doing all the vertical. Wow. And I'll be, John, I'll be John Brown if my 89-year-old dad doesn't have two other projects under contract that he's moving towards closing. One is a 200-unit apartment building complex, and another one is uh, townhouses that he's getting ready to build. And um, people ask me, say, say, Wallace, you're 89 years old. Why in the world are you still doing all that? He said, why would I get up in the morning unless I got something to work on? Yeah. And, and you know, Brett, with you being a Christian and a believer in God, I heard something not long ago that I, I think you'll find interesting. And that is this idea of retirement, you know, actually is a United States of America concept, uh, this retirement concept. And I'd never heard it until earlier this year Someone said, Jay, did you know that retirement is not a biblical concept? You'll, you will not find anybody in the Bible that ever retired. 
Now, they might have retired from one thing and gone to another thing, but, you know, God created us to work and to be producers and be creators, just like he is the ultimate creator. Had you ever thought about that? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, if, if, if I've got you figured out, Brett, I don't think you're ever going to retire either, right? I'm not. No, <laughs> I'm not. Well, Brett, I got one more question for you before I let you go. And that is, if you could only give one piece of advice to, say, a new real estate investor that is starting out, what advice would you give them? And just be bold and have faith and, and just talk to people and share your story. Um, there's a lot of good people left in this world and, and a lot of them still want to make money. Absolutely. Brett, thank you so much for taking time to come on and be with me here on Raising Private Money. Yes, sir, Jay. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay. God bless you. God bless you, Brett. Well, there you have it, my friend, another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I need your help. Yes, I need your help. I want you to think of someone that would benefit that you know from this episode, who might be inspired and motivated to hear Brett's story, share this episode with them. And also, if you are listening on iTunes, uh, go to the upper right-hand corner, you'll see three little dots and you'll find follow or follow me. Be sure and follow me so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episodes. And in addition to that, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on any other episodes as well. And I really appreciate you giving me five stars and a quick little review uh, as you're listening here to the show. So I look forward to seeing you here on another upcoming episode. Here's to taking your business to the next level. And I'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money.